3D printing fast and perfect? That's the dream, right? So why does it seem like I should be getting faster and better print? I'm going to walk us through three easy calibration tests that really do need to be run. And then I have one really simple setting change that is going to change a lot for you. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! And just so you know, I'm at Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer here, but most of this info should translate. And by the way, if you haven't looked at Orchid Slicer lately, wow. Bamboo Studio supports over 50 printers, but the open source version, Orca Slicer, now supports over 130 printers. First up are the flow calibration tests in both Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer. And other than taking some print time, they're pretty simple to do. Both of these tests are going to help us make sure that the flow of the filament coming out of the extruder is not only what the slicer and the printer are expecting, but what's best for our print. Flow Dynamics is our first test, and this takes about 15 minutes. And to get going, just start a new project, click on the Calibration tab, then go to the bottom of the page and click Manual Calibration. You can look over everything you want to, but make sure you change your nozzle type and the plate type if that's necessary. Next, you want to select your filament type. You should probably start with those generic standard settings and then pick a method, line or path. Line's quickest and easiest, uh, but they both provide pretty much the same information. For the K values, you should be able to leave this alone or follow the instructions if you want to experiment. Then all that's left is calibrate. Well, when your print is done, follow the instructions to find your best setting for the flow dynamics calibration factor or factor K and enter that in. Our next test under the calibrate tab is flow rate. And here you have two options, a complete calibration or a fine calibration based on your flow ratio. Well, the complete calibration, that's probably what most of us will need and use. But if you have some issues or concerns, you can always come back later and do the fine calibration. Set your nozzle, your flake, filament, everything as before, and hit calibrate. Now this test is gonna go through two different calibrations. Each one's gonna take about 25 or 30 minutes. Just follow the instructions to enter in your best settings. You're done. Our third and last calibration test is something I really kinda wanted to dig into for a while. It's called max volumetric speed. You may have seen or heard something about that as well. This setting is present in pretty much every slicer out there, but you're probably gonna see it under different names. Just so we know what it is, basically this setting puts a speed limit on your printing speed to make sure that enough filament is going to be able to come out to actually make a decent print. Your printer and slicer assume this setting is correct even if you've never looked at it. This can hurt your print speeds if your MVS is too low, which slows down printing because your printer doesn't want to be pushing too much filament and getting those stringing or block. Conversely, if it's set too high, your printer will try to print faster than the filament can come out, which can cause a ruined print. Now, they recommend running a max volumetric speed test when you switch to a new, significantly different filament, or if you change the nozzle size, or if you're having problems with your prints, things like that. Bamboo even says it's good to do if you have damp filament. I can only assume that's if you don't have time to dry it or a way to dry it. How do I do that? Regardless, is a good thing to do with any new company filament that you purchase. And also, it's recommended to set this amount just a bit lower than the result. Remember this for later. This gives your printer and slicer some wiggle room and should be good to use on all filaments from that particular brand. Orca Slicer has max volumetric speed calibration built into its extra calibration settings, but let's do it manually. I found this test print on printables that says it's made for the Bamboo X1C, but I just switched my printer over to the P1S and it worked great. I also ran this on my Creality K1 and there it also worked just fine. Oh, just make sure you're in base mode when you print it. After getting the print into your slicer, you're going to need to make a few setting changes before you print though. Under your filament settings, which you can reach by going next to your filament and clicking on the notepad with the pen, under that first tab, which is called filament, scroll down and you'll find max volumetric speed. We're going to raise this to a higher number. The designer of the test recommends something like 50, which is a little crazy, but since Bamboo's PLA setting is only 21, I'm gonna stay somewhere in there and set mine to 25. Next on the second tab and under cooling, 
turn off the box next to slow printing down for better cooling. And this way we get full speed without any slowdown. Also, I noticed on my print that the auto brim function didn't turn on a brim. And since this is printing with base mode, we're definitely going to want to turn that on. And uh, I set mine to inner and outer brim and we're free. And if you're using an AMS or other multicolor machine, you're going to want to make sure that your print is set to the right filament, both when you slice it and when you print. Yeah, I've made that mistake. That had to hurt. Yeah, yeah. Well, now we can slice the file, but before we print, let's look at the preview. At the top right of your display, you'll see the color steep, and it's probably set to line type. Let's change that to flow, and you'll immediately see where the flow speed changes on your print. If it's all one color and nothing seems to change, you may have made an error somewhere, so just close it out and start all over. Once you've done all that, it's now time to print, but before you do that, I just want to remind you to stand by close to your printer as you're printing, especially if you set that speed value super high. Um, if things really start looking bad, you're going to want to stop that print. But don't worry about any of that bad printing there. That's kind of what we really want for the next step. Now on mine, I made a mark where the print started going bad just so we can see it. You don't have to do that, but that just shows us where we'll want to measure to with our caliper. Well, once you have your measurement, the formula for your max volumetric speed is really super simple. Just add 10 to the number. That's it. Well, almost. As I said before, it's better to go a little lower than what you calculated just to be safe. And the recommendation by the designer is to drop it by 10%, which actually sounds good to me, but that's up to you. For me, my caliper showed 11.93 millimeters. And if I add 10 to that, it makes it 21.93. Subtracting 10%, just to be safe, I'm at 19.74, but I'm weird. I like round numbers, so I'm going to make it 19.8. And that's a 65% increase over that generic setting we had of 12. I can't believe that worked! Now, we'll remind you here that all three of these calibration settings are all about getting the best looking print that we can get. And even though speeds in that last calibration test, uh, these tests are all about the best flow. After calibrating everything, you're going to want to save your new max volumetric speed so it can be easily used in the future. Just create a new filament user preset by once again clicking that little pen and paper icon next to your current filament. Make sure you rename the filament something that's going to remind you of what you calibrated for, like the company name, the brand, the filament, something like that. Oh, and also make sure to hit that save icon on the right. Well, then you can scroll to the bottom and you'll see that max volumetric speed. If you started with the generic TLA, it's going to be on 12. But now you get to type in that new setting. It, for me, was 19.8. And then once you do that, you can close out that box. Here's where, after a long search and numerous comparisons, I found that one setting that needs to be adjusted. And it really makes a huge difference in print speed. And of all things, it comes down to cooling. Well, first thing we need to do is go back to those filament settings. And then under the cooling tab, we're gonna look for max fan speed threshold. Next to that fan speed, you're gonna see something called layer time. That number, that number right there, most likely an A, that's gonna be one of the biggest wastes of time you'll have, especially on smaller frames. The generic PLA settings has this at eight seconds. That means every single layer has to have a minimum of eight seconds before it's allowed to go on and print the next one, whether it's a full build plate or just a tiny little screw. Obviously with small print, this is huge. A small layer could take a second or two to print, but then just sit there for the next six or seven seconds doing absolutely nothing. When I was looking at this, before I jumped in on any changes, I thought I should check this out a little bit just to be sure. So I looked under the standard fan boost setting for PLA and there I found their layer time is set to four seconds, which is way more reasonable than eight. Okay, so now a quick slice of the file with our new settings, and finally we see that print time drop down. If you're having issues with prints, there's a lot of things you can check, like your temps, your filament, fogs, many more things like that. Even a full calibration, it's always a good idea, especially if you run your printer a lot. As with any changes you make, keep a close eye on your print. Should there be any problems, you may need to up your layer cooling time and or turn down the max volumetric speed. Well, if you have any questions or if you have tips for all of this, please leave them in the comments so we can all benefit.
speed, great prints, and having fun. It's what we do here in the lab if we all learn, create, and animate.